Hello, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com with part two of this two-part After Effects tutorial called Deep Thought. Now, if you followed part one, you should have something that looks like this, which is our underwater scene, um, complete with light rays, um, plankton-like textures, and these rising bubbles. Um, in part two, as I promised, I'll be showing you how to use the lens blur effect with a depth map. Um, we're going to use the depth map to specifically focus on the top right-hand corner and defocus everything else in the bottom left hand corner. Now depth maps can be really really useful with a lens blur effect particularly if you're looking to uh, create that bokeh or blurred background that you, uh, you'll probably find difficult to achieve with a consumer grade um, camcorder because they have a notoriously long depth of field. But I'll probably cover that in more detail in a future tutorial. For now we're just going to uh, create a selective depth map to uh, apply some specific blur to this project. Now the layer we're uh, most concerned with is the uh, deep blue background which we created before with our four color gradient and our CC snow which is the uh, rising bubbles that you can see here. If I go back to the preview I created earlier as you can see the particles are in fairly sharp focus towards this side. They're also blurred out considerably on this side with that kind of lens blur effect. So how do we achieve that? Well, it's actually quite simple, but uh, I'll just reiterate the warning I, I gave you in part one, which is the lens blur effect, particularly when used with a depth map, is uh, particularly processor heavy. So do be prepared for some long render times when you apply this. So select your deep blue background, go to your effects and presets panel and type in lens blur, and drag the lens blur effect onto the background layer. Now the instant default settings will actually blur out everything, as you can see here. Um, but obviously we don't want to do that specifically, we want to uh, selectively blur some things. So we're going to create our depth map now, and we do that by right clicking and creating a new solid. It doesn't really matter what colour you make it, but we'll just make it white and call it depth map. And hit OK. I'm going to go to the effects and presets panel again and find the ramp effect and to drag that onto our depth map and you'll get this which is a basic black to white ramp um, running from the top to the bottom. Now a little bit of an explanation of how the depth map works in this instance. We're going to be setting it to work off the luminance value, so basically the brightness. So everywhere that is bright, as in the white area down here, that will have the effect applied to it in greater amounts everything that's dark will have less effect on it. So I'm just dragging the uh, start of ramp and end of ramp position indicators. So I get this nice diagonal ramp with dark up at the top right and bright down at the bottom left. Now the next step, and this is one that catches out a lot of people when they're using depth maps for the first time, particularly with this ramp, ramp technique, um, you need to pre-compose this layer. If you don't, when you apply the depth map to it, all it'll see is a white solid. If you pre-compose it, then it'll look at the composition as a whole with all the effects added to it and, and work out the uh, depth values from that. So uh, select your depth map, hit Control, Shift and C to bring up the pre-compose layer. I'll just rename it to Depth Map Precomp. Make sure you move all attributes into the new composition and just hit OK. Now another thing we can do is just drag the depth map down to the bottom and uh, turn off its visibility because it doesn't actually need to be seen in order to work. Now when we go to the deep blue background and the lens blur effect in the effect controls panel we can select the depth map layer, depth map precomp and instantly you can see the effect has changed because it's dark on the depth map precomp up in the top right You've got these points which are in sharp focus and anything towards the brighter part of the screen gets gradually more out of focus. And that's pretty much what we're after. Now before I create the final component of this project I'm just going to turn the lens blur off for now just to speed things up a little bit because as I mentioned it is a little bit on the uh, processor intensive side. Now you're ready to create the uh, text component so go to your type tool and type whatever takes you fancy. And we'll just line it up to the right hand edge of the frame towards the bottom third. 
Now, if you're interested, I'm actually using uh, the Garamond typeface, about 40 pixels, and set to white. So I'm just going to give this some basic animation before we add any lens blur to it. So select your text layer, tap P to bring up the position values with the timeline indicator back at the beginning of the timeline. We're going to tap the stopwatch to create a keyframe to hold it in its current position. Then move to the two second mark and just drag the X values so it drifts a little bit to the left. So you can see we've got a two second animation where it drifts slowly to the left. And then go to the end of the timeline Hold down shift and drag the X value to drag it quickly over to the other end of the frame. So that'll give us a slow drift and then a faster drift towards the left hand edge. Now if you're looking carefully you can see we've hit a, hit a small problem. Now you'll often come across this with um, keyframe position animations because After Effects default setting is to use auto bezier um, calculations for all your spatial and temporal keyframes. Um, what this means is it's actually added this kind of bump to the right before it starts moving to the left. Now it's an easy one to fix. You just right click on the offending keyframe, go to keyframe interpolation and change it from auto bezier to linear in the spatial interpolation section. And we'll just hit OK. Now when we go back, you'll find it's acting as it should. Nice slow drift to the left and then it picks up speed as time goes on. Okay, so that's the motion setup. A couple more things before I uh, add the lens blur. Just going to hit T to bring up the opacity value and at the beginning of our composition create a keyframe, set it to 0, move to the 1 second mark and set it to 100, then go to the 8 second mark create another keyframe to hold it at 100 and then move to the end and take it back down to 0 again. So when you put all that together we'll get a slow fade in with some nice drifting text. It'll slowly pick up speed as it moves across the screen and then when it hits the 8 second point it'll slowly fade out. Final thing we're going to do is go back to our deep blue background, re-enable the lens blur hit Control c to copy the lens blur and just paste it onto our deep thoughts text. I just want to make this a little bit more subtle so I'm just going to drop the iris radius down to about 8 and that will actually reduce the amount of blur that's added which means that our first part is actually quite visible. And as we get deeper and deeper into the lens blur depth map, you'll find it gets blurrier and blurrier. So that's about it. You're ready to render. So I'll just uh, hit shift and uh, zero. And uh, I'll see you after the break. So there you have it. Our finished animation with a lens blur, with a depth map, some nice floating bubbles, some nice light rays, and a nice drifting fractal noise texture map. Um, just a quick reminder, the project file for this will be at my website at shortformvideo.com, so uh, if you want to just grab it from there, help yourselves. In the meantime, I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.